Hello and welcome back to the Green Workbench. Today we're going to be making a custom frame. This is the piece that I need to frame. So you can pick whatever wood you want. Um, you can take a board and cut it down to the sizes you want or a lot of times you can just buy wood in a size that will work. Um, I'm going to use this wood that I got in Japan because it's a Japanese print. Um, you want to have at least a half an inch to three quarters uh, for the frame. Uh, it's a lot more difficult if you go thinner than that. So I've got my stock. The first thing I do is to make some measurements. So first you want to measure your print or the matting that you're going to use. Um, so mine comes out to 18 and 3 quarters inches. I'm not going to use a mat because it kind of has a built-in one. So if it's 18 and 3 quarters, the inside of your 45 degree is going to be one half inch less than that so 18 and a quarter and the reason for that is because you have a quarter inch rabbit all the way around that this the glass and your print sits into so I'll do 18 and a quarter and then do the same thing for the height I set up my compound miter to make my 45 degree cut if you don't have a compound miter saw that's no problem you can use a compound or a miter box saw and do it by hand. Um, they're set up with the 45 already in the miter box, um, so that's also another good option. I've made my first cut. So now, if you recall, for the length, I needed 18 and a quarter from the short side. So 18 and a quarter from this short side. I'll measure that out and then cut the 45. I went in 18 and a quarter. I marked my 45 just to make it easier. And then I have a laser on my, my, on my compound miter saw also that helps. So the key is you want these to be exactly the same, so you can measure out, but it's also good to actually use the first one as a guide. Get it set and clamp it down, make your cut. So now we need our quarter inch rabbit. So there's a couple ways to do it. You can use a router. Um, and if you have a router table that makes it nice and easy, just run it through. You can use a table saw, which is what I'm going to do because I don't have my router table set up yet. Um, so if you use a table saw, you just set it at the depth that you want and set your fence in a quarter inch run it through and then you can pass um, cut the rest cut, cut that quarter inch piece first because that's where you want it to end um, make sure that you are using some sort of push stick through if you're going to do the table saw um, especially because you're, you've got this angle here that and you don't want your fingers to slide into the blade um, some people like to cut this rabbit first before they cut the angles um, Depends on the wood you have and um, what else you want to use it for, but that's always an option as well. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up and cut my rabbits. My rabbit is cut. So now we need to figure out how we're going to connect. You can use framing staples if you want. You can just glue it if you want. I'm going to go ahead and use biscuits. So I'm going to use my biscuit joiner, cut in here, you want to make sure you're not cutting into the rabbit here, so send, make sure you set up your piece right with your biscuit joiner, uh, and that will help keep the frame together. I have my biscuits cut, 
So I'm ready to glue it up. So I'm going to put a thin sheen of glue because it's end grain. Let it dry for a few minutes to close up the grain. And then I will go ahead and glue it up with the biscuits. Alright, I've got all my biscuits joints glued up. I've got my framing clamp ready to go. So I'll tighten that up, make sure it is square before you let it dry. The last thing you want is for your frame not to be square. If you get a frame clamp like this, they part of what they do is help you make it square, but you still want to check. Another option if you don't have a biscuit joiner or a framing clamp, it's just used a nail gun. And it's not quite as strong, but it'll do the job. So we're gonna glue it up. Make sure we're square. Then we'll just shoot a couple nails in. Here's one more option if maybe you nailed it and you're not confident. can drill a hole and put some glue in the bottom and tamp a dowel down it and you can find a dowel that's the same wood as your frame or go for a different color just for a different look um, but that's another option that dowel will strengthen that joint all right now we want to sand it down nice and smooth All right, once it's sanded, we're ready for some finish. So we'll spray some polyurethane on this and then set it aside. Um, before you do that, make sure you double check your inside measurements um, because we're going to cut our plexiglass while it's drying. It's time to cut our plexiglass. It comes with a plastic cover on each side so you can mark it up and don't pull that cover off until you're done cutting. So I've marked it off with sharpie and then I'll just have to run it through the table saw freehand stay on the line one I'll go width and then length and that'll be one and then once I'm sure that it's the right size then I can peel off the plastic covering the finish is done my plexiglass is in. Um, I cut this piece of cardboard to be a backer. Um, you can use cardboard is easy or you can cut a piece of wood. Um, fit everything in there. You can use staples like you would see in a frame you get from the store. Um, you just staple into the edges and bend them down. Or you can use a bracket, something like that in the corners to hold your piece in and then you can buy different hanging hardware also at the store um, you just hammer this in or you can run wire across it to hang from um, so there's a lot of different options all right it's turned out pretty well I hope 
hope you took away some tips from this video. Um, making your own frames is pretty easy to do and you can customize it uh, the way you want using the, the wood you want and it's a lot cheaper. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, please check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel and I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time on the Green Workbench.